this is the new version of my electronic dice. They have 21 RGB LEDs, all individually controllable. In fact, here I can make this one play an animation with each LED having a different color. They have a Bluetooth microcontroller that you can see here is talking to my iPad and it's uh, sending over the face and even the accelerometer readings. You can see them on the graphs. And of course the communication is two ways. So I can also have the iPad control the dice and make them play different kinds of animations. The dice also have a rechargeable battery that can be inductively recharged with this coil here on the one face and a charger that I uh, made separately where you can just place the battery on the charger and the charger lights up and starts charging the battery. I picture these dice being used in a few different ways. The first is as a replacement for regular dice. You just have this set of cool customizable light up dice. The second, which is something I hadn't initially thought of, is for accessibility. People who can't see really well could take advantage of the color coding to identify the throws. Or even for people who can't see at all, the app running on their phone could just read out the numbers to them. The third application, uh, one which I think has a lot of unexplored areas, is bridging the gap between the digital and the physical. That means things like playing a game on your iPad or Switch with the physical dice. Uh, and you can imagine that any game where randomness plays a big role, such as uh, an RPG maybe, uh, probably feels very different when the randomness comes from you rolling the dice as opposed to just a computer telling you whether you hit or not. But it doesn't stop there either. I think there's a lot of potential for bringing the sort of computer smarts into the board gaming experience. Um, anything from just having a phone that sort of plays a soundtrack to your game based on what's going on to having really mixed experiences. The uh, assembly uh, and design is fairly similar to the previous version of the die. Um, this is it right here. You can see it's a little bit bigger than the new version. Uh, and it's surprising how much, like one millimeter, this one's only 17 millimeters versus 16, um, how much one millimeter makes a difference both in the way the dice feel but also in how hard they are to assemble. You'll notice that the new version doesn't have little screws or, or even a, a lid to open and I'll get into that in more details in just a bit. The assembly of the dice starts with this. This is a flexible PCB. It has two layers and in fact here it's a small panel of 10 different dice um, and I've already cut one of them out. You can see the footprint for all the different components here. This here is the actual uh, cube shape of the die that you can probably recognize. And these components here are the RGB LEDs. There's three on this face, one, two, six, five, and four. This chip here is the uh, inductive charging um, IC. It manages both receiving the inductive current from the coil, which you can see right here, tiny little coil, and charging the LiPo battery, sort of all at in once. It's a, it's a wonderful chip. On the other side, right here, you can see the uh, microcontroller. This one includes a Bluetooth radio and some other components in here, like an antenna and a crystal, a few different things. This here is the accelerometer, which is how the die knows which way it's facing. And of course, uh, you know, you can see this bodge here, a bunch of, you know, discrete components for all uh, the various, you know, uh, ICs on board. And some epoxy that I've put uh, to try and stiffen the different faces. This entire thing then gets uh, folded into a cube and wrapped around the battery, which is right here. So it goes approximately like this. Uh, 
and then before I put the lid in, I actually um, fill the whole thing with um, epoxy. And that's actually kind of a big deal with this prototype. You know, this is the, the epoxy I used, simple, easy cast. So the only thing is that this is fairly liquid, right? It doesn't, um, it's not as gooey as uh, uh, the five minute epoxy that you can buy. And that's so that it can flow in all, uh, all the corners really easily. But the, uh, the epoxy really makes a huge difference, right? So the first way it makes a difference is that it makes the dye really solid, right? Like it's all one piece now. Everything is completely bonded together um, and nothing will move, nothing will break once it's put together. Um, and it, it has a feel of a solid piece of, you know, well, epoxy. <laughs> um, and so it doesn't have the, the sort of rattly sound of like an electronic dice, right? It, it feels like a regular standard playing dice. The other thing is that it makes the density inside the, the case really uh, even. What I mean is that, you know, epoxy is, isn't, doesn't have the same weight as uh, components or the, the flexible board or, you know, any of the other stuff that's inside or the battery. Um, but it's a lot closer in density than, than thin air, right? And so by filling in the entire volume with epoxy, all the holes, it really evens out the density throughout the entire volume and makes the dye that much more balanced. Um, I don't think they're perfectly balanced yet, but they're pretty close. And the thing is, because these dice are electronic and they can track all their throws, I'll be able to um, actually tell you know, what the, the remaining difference is and um, fix it in the next revision. Which brings me to the last question, which is, what's next for the dice? Well, probably there are a few more prototypes on the horizon, as I need to sort out manufacturing, something that's new to me. There are lots of questions that I don't have the answers to right now. Things like, can I get the dice manufactured at all? Um, can I get them manufactured for cheap enough? How many do I need to get made in order to reach that price point? How long is it going to take? There's tons and tons of things like that that I need to find out the answers to. And so while I am definitely considering a Kickstarter, I also want to make sure I do my homework and know what I'm getting into. So if you like this project, the best thing you could do to help right now is sign up for the newsletter. That way I can let you know when things are moving forward and together we can take these dice beyond the basement prototype stage. So again, thanks for watching. Until next time.